Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's DX Robot Spirits VB6 Koenig Monster Toys. There have been three releases of the Koenig Monster so far. The first was the standard version, released September 2010 for 16,800 yen. Second, on the same day, was the special version, which cost 21,000 yen. And then five years later, more or less, in April 2015, we got the Wings of Goodbye version, uh, which was a Tamashi exclusive for 23,760 yen. All three toys come with the same basic clear display stand, the adapters for each mode, and arms for each mode. The special version stepped it up and gave you a base that that display stand could connect to. I'll show you that in a moment here. Uh, there was also uh, stickers included in the standard version. There was just four stickers, so you could choose from two different types of nose art that you could apply to the toy yourself. The Wings of Goodbye version comes without those stickers because it already has some, some nose art on it. Uh, the special version comes with nose art on it as well as two very large sticker sheets that really allow you to detail up the toy as one of uh, two various different uh, versions that were seen through the Macross Frontier TV show uh, or the first Macross Frontier movie. Also included with the special version, although not entirely special if you ask me, are the contract that Cheryl uh, signed with SMS to save the Macross Galaxy fleet in the first Macross Frontier movie, uh, as well as a copy of her credit card, uh, which has a unique serial number uh, as part of the special attribute of the toy. So this is the standard version. You can see there is no art on the nose. Uh, I was a little bummed to see that they didn't paint the eye on it because it seems like that was kind of universal no matter what nose art was there. There was always an eye even if it was kind of obscured by the nose art. So there you go. Both sides, no nose art. I have connected the display stand. Again, this display stand comes with all of the VB6 toys. So there it is. It just pops into two little slots on the bottom. There's no angling, no adjusting anything. You could flip this around if you wanted to have it descending instead of ascending. Clips in pretty firmly into place, although it is arguable about how sturdy that is on the toy. I mentioned the SP version comes with a base for your display stand. It looks like this. Uh, allegedly, there is a scene, maybe in the movies, I've watched it all, but I don't really recall it, where the Koenig monster lands and does some damage. I guess it's pretty memorable for some other people, but not for me. Uh, and this display stand base is supposed to mimic what was seen in that scene. Uh, as you can see, again, just the normal display stand. There's a little groove in the base. You just apply it like so. And there you go. Here is the nose art of the special version. So there you go. It's sexy Cheryl as a demon eating ice cream. Because why not? All right, here we have the Wings of Goodbye version. This is the final release from April 2015. Uh, let's start by showing you the nose art. Here is little Ronka flying. And on the other side, we have Cheryl kind of floating at you as well. And as you can see in the background, there is that eye I was alluding to. Would have been nice if the standard version had gone ahead and included that. Here again is the standard version. You can see color differences, a darker green on the wings of goodbye, which makes the highlights of the trim really pop out a lot better. Uh, just in general, the toy does have some nice paint. You can see there's metallic paint in there, nice mouth, more trim on the bottom, darker colored insets. There isn't a lot of, um, translucent plastic used for any accents. So there, things could have been a little bit better. There isn't clear canopy here. This is just painted black. You can see there's nothing really going on back there and that is why. Uh, gaps, there are a couple of them. You can see right there. They're pretty tight. 
Uh, they don't really stick out at you. You can't see through the toy here. Uh, so shuttle mode, while it does have a, a couple minor issues with it, it is rock solid. It is pretty well detailed. It's not the mode you're probably buying the toy for, but it is pretty good. Uh, one little fault I would say, it would be nice if you could pull the toe out further and get these toes to be vertical, because you see in the line art, uh, that does go up a little bit more vertical than it does on this toy. Uh, but otherwise, very, very nice. You may have noticed that up to this point in the review, I haven't really discussed scale at all, and that is because the Robot Spirits line is a non-scale line. At 27 and a half centimeters long, this toy is roughly 1108 scale. In comparison, here is Yamato's Koenig Monster. This toy is 1100 scale. You could, so you can see it's fairly significantly larger. This is actually 30, 30 and a half centimeters long. So that is what you get from a difference perspective. Obviously, this toy plays very nicely with other Robot Damashi releases, which are non-transformable toys. This is the only Macross, Robot Damashi, Robot Spirits, transformable toy. You may be wondering yourself right now, is the difference between 1100 and 1108 such a big deal that it would ob be obvious to me looking at my toys on a shelf? Uh, and to answer that question hopefully for you, I have concluded a shot here with three 1100 scale Macross vehicles and the VB6 in the foreground. Moving right along while still discussing scale, here are the Robot Damashi releases and a Bandai DX Renewal toy next to a Gearwalk mode monster. Now, uh, I am not showing transformation in this video. I do have a separate transformation video. I very much suggest you check out because this is definitely not a traditional transformation. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you are used to it, it is not bad at all. A uh, couple things to point out. Uh, there are some tabs on the top of the toy. You can see I've got a stress mark on one of them. So be very careful of this during transformation. This stress mark actually was on the toy right out of the box. So it's a durability issue to be concerned with. Uh, the toys also do have a bunch of paint on them. Uh, I haven't had any scratching problems, but I imagine it is also something you want to be conscious of. Uh, here you get some nice ratcheted joints. Uh, I will say that from a looks perspective, there are a bunch of screw holes that kind of bother me, uh, particularly up around the arms and the big screws right between the cannons. That's a bit of a bummer, but you do get some neat gimmicks, so let's take a closer look at those. This is the butt of the toy with the legs splayed, and I have the back panel pointing towards you, and that is the first gimmick I would like to show you. This back panel can be pulled away takes a little bit of effort because there's pegs on the top and the bottom holding it into place. Let's spin it around here. There we go. Once it is freed, it extends away from the toy like so. Pivots downward. And then if you point the toy upward, it can actually touch the bottom, touch the ground, and uh, become a tripod which would hold it in place while it fires its massive cannons. Now, it's not a, a very well-implemented gimmick in that it really just barely touches the ground, uh, and you got to finagle it into just the right position to make that happen. Uh, but it's certainly something you can do and may do. Uh, from the front, it's hard to tell what the depth is like, so it might be a little more convincing that it is firing that gun. And now that I've got the front of the toy facing you, we can uh, zoom in a little bit here and take a look at this turret. So you have a rotating gun turret right on the front as well. So that's kind of neat. Uh, you might have noticed I didn't mention gimmicks much in shuttle mode, and that's really because there aren't any. No pilots and no landing gears. So in Garawalk mode, you do get a couple nice gimmicks, uh, but you do not get them in shuttle mode. One gimmick I also would have liked to have seen, but we do not see, is uh, little trap doors to conceal the big gap here. So definitely some big gaps in gear walk mode. Uh, not so noticeable from the front. And actually here's a line art comparison. In this line art comparison you can see the uh, DX does a really good job of emulating the line art, although there are certain weaknesses you could find. 
The biggest is probably related to the anime magic of what happens to the nose in shuttle mode. Uh, it seems to shrink quite a bit in the line art, uh, and rather obvious on the toys. All right, let's discuss articulation for a moment here. Uh, it's actually a little bit frustrating because there are so many different joints on this toy involved in the transformation process uh, that it leads to quite a bit of articulation, but it can sometimes be really difficult just to get this toy to stand level. So right now it doesn't look like it's leaning to either side. That's great. Uh, your arm articulation we can begin with is a, the ability to pivot all the way around. Uh, then you can see there are two joints right after the shoulder. So you got that one and then you have this one. And again, that's because the arms have to do some crazy transformation folding. Uh, then again, two joints right at the base of the arm. Uh, so you get all of that. Then you can rotate at where the arm and elbow meet. And here, nice clicky joints. So all of that's very good. Uh, but you could see where it might be hard to get this arm to be doing the exact same thing this arm is doing with all those different points of articulation uh, and different ratchets. Uh, one thing also, when you're handling the arm, sometimes the shoulder rotates on you, so you'll have to be conscious of that and check on it. Uh, I already showed you the rotating turret. Uh, another frustration is that the toy tends to settle on its own, and thus the turret kind of gets pinched. So it would be nicer if the toy locked firmly into the upright position. Uh, moving to the legs, another thing that would be nice if you had a pivot that you could just rotate back on. Instead you have a pivot where you can go forward, which isn't particularly helpful. Uh, but once you want to move back, then you're into the position where you're going to be using the legs. The legs do give you quite a bit of uh, articulation to work with. Again, many, many joints involved. So uh, what we can show you here, there are, there's a pivot right here and a pivot right here that kind of form a knee. And uh, well, I guess this would be a hip and a knee. Uh, you can fold forward on either one of those. Uh, getting everything in the tightest position is the easiest thing to do. Once you go beyond that, there's uh, a few different things that are moving. And again, it becomes hard to make sure you have both legs uh, at the same point if you want it to look level. But if you wanted to do something uh, a little more dynamic, you know, something like what you see here, that's certainly possible. And another thing you see with that toy is you have the ability to pivot outward. So you have the, the ability to piv pivot outward both at the hips, but also if you bring this leg down beyond this bar here, you have the ability to pivot, pivot outward below the knee or inward. So lots of dynamic posing you can do because of that. Uh, once you do pivot that knee outward, uh, you can't pinch it quite as tight, so you're going to have a taller looking gear walk mode, uh, but that's not necessarily a problem. So there, we can pivot that guy out. So you can get some really wide and low stances. And again, that works for that uh, tripod gimmick that they have. Uh, so overall, very dynamic, tons of articulation. Sometimes that can lead to a bit of frustration. But let us continue on now. Uh, let's do a quick look at how this toy stacks up against the Yamato VB6 in Gearwalk mode. So here you see the Yamato VB6 Koenig Monster in Gearwalk mode in the Bandai version. Uh, and there are some pretty big differences besides just a, a scale problem. Uh, the cannons on the Yamato are much larger uh, and the arms do not come nearly as far forward as they do on the Bandai toy. Uh, I don't know if the Bandai toy is uh, more correct, but I do know that that combination gives the Yamato a little bit more of an intimidation factor than we see on the Bandai toy. Bandai toy overall, clearly a much better toy and uh, a much better looking toy. But those two elements do work uh, for the Yamato toy. 
Before moving on, let's take a moment to look at the display stand. You do get two options for gear walk mode. There's a stubby, straight, vertical post. This is the clip that attaches to gear walk mode. You, from the back of the toy, you want to fold down these parts here, which are concealment parts from shuttle mode. Uh, and then you just want to slip this in so that these two forks in the front grab those two swung down pieces and then clip to the back of the toy. It's a little easier to do if you splay the legs out. You should kind of click into place like that just did. Uh, and then you're just going to connect it to the display stand. Just a little bit of pressure in there. Uh, and now you have your toy being supported by a display stand, uh, which just really is making it a little bit more stable at this point. Uh, not really doing a whole lot else uh, besides the fact uh, it's making it less articulated. But uh, So my standpoint on this version of the display stand is that it's pretty much useless. The toy handles itself just fine in gear walk mode without that display stand. Your second choice is this little display stand that has a backwards angle to it. Now I am going to use my special version, so I'll bring back out the display stand base and connect the display stand to it. Now again, we are going to take our little adapter and put it on the toy from behind. Now you need to make sure those parts are swung down properly and it should just clip into place. Oops. And we are going to put the adapter onto the display stand. And now what you can do is display the legs really far out and get that trap door to be connected and everything is kind of stuck in place, which uh, it works. But again, the toy stands in gear walk mode perfectly fine, even with the legs splayed all the way apart. Uh, so I just found the display stand to be pretty much gratuitous uh, in gear walk mode. All right, here we can see how much taller the Yamato toy is in Batroid mode than the Bandai toy. The Bandai toy is called a DX toy. You could see the DX VF25 off to the left to the head about the same height and that's sort of the idea there. Obviously like other DX toys it has metal, it's fully transformable, uh, it's an oddball scale in line with the robot spirits and coincidentally about the same height as a DX VF25, thus the DX moniker. So the Bandai toy much shorter than the Yamato toy but much much more stable than the Yamato toy as well as obviously having uh, a lot better paint applications. There are a number of reasons why Bandai's DX Koenig Monster is better than the Yamato toy in Batroid mode and just in general. But uh, there is something that the Yamato toy does definitely do better besides kind of just the hulking mass uh, that it is with the cannons kind of hovering forward and above. The Yamato toy actually has the toes that pivot down and become the heels. And that's what it's supposed to do and it looks great. The Bandai toy instead has feet where the toes just come out on either side. They don't pivot back, they don't do anything, and what it actually does is it rests more on this little piece here, which is not what's supposed to happen according to the line art, but um, it makes a nice stable platform, so I'm not really complaining. And if you were on something like cloth, like I am, you could theoretically uh, put the feet out in such a way where you would elevate that heel uh, but it would be dicey at best and you're, you're not going to do that and realistically. So, um, that is one thing that the Yamato toy definitely does better. What Yamato does much worse is, uh, the toy is floppy. So see how little resistance there is. Uh, and it's a real balancing act and also the nose cone is just drooping there. So all the joints are really loose on the Yamato toy and they don't very, do a very good job of supporting the weight of the toy. So it's really not fun to handle and really prone to collapsing on you. Whereas the Bandai toy has very stiff joints that are very well ratcheted and holds this 
position just fine. And you could try to do some dynamic stuff with that. So let's check out articulation. All right, many of the joints that you will be using in this mode are the same joints you were using in gear walk mode. So I'm not going to rehash everything. I'll try to move through this fairly quickly. We'll start with the shoulder joint. Nice ratchets, spins around nicely. And there's a joint underneath the shoulder, a twist point. And then you have those same arm joints. You have one here, one here, and then another one down here and the twist point. All of them nice tight ratcheting joints. Uh, great for holding poses with what could be pretty heavy arms. And again, arm slide. You're gonna wanna match them up on both sides to make sure you're symmetrical. Uh, turning our attention to the head, which fin should be up. It just swivels left and right. You have a uh, pivot point down, which is necessary for transformation. And you can pull it up a little bit. Uh, not much, it's definitely not a ball joint. And there's a big hole right underneath it, which is kind of one of the bigger weaknesses for uh, Batroid mode. Uh, you do have a fist, individual thumb, and fingers. There is no second joint at the top of the fingers. It's just kind of a uh, clasping hand. Not very exciting. Again, no wrist, just open, shut. Very basic. No twist point at the waist to speak of. Uh, and then as we move down, same problem again with the chest settling a little bit and kind of hiding the rotating turret, which still does rotate in Batroid mode, nothing changing there. So, your hips, you can come out with the hips, and there is the teeniest bit of motion forward and back. I don't even know if that's just normal flexibility. If you bring it in, maybe a little bit more, not really. So, uh, the hips are the big letdown here. Uh, any toy, as you can imagine, with the Batroid mode, but hips that don't swing forward or back is pretty limited. But, uh, not that it really makes up for it, you can use all of these joints down within the leg to kind of simulate more dynamic stuff. So we can move uh, this piece out of the way. Let's bring this down and bring this out. Uh, and that really lets you bring back this so you can get that a little further out here. I'm sure we can. Oh, there it goes. All right, so we bring that out, and then we could bring up the knee a full 90 degrees. So that's a decent range of motion, but remember, you, again, don't have hips, so on the other side, if you wanted to do something like a running pose, what you're gonna do is probably just bring the leg forward and then use the lower joint to bring the leg back and that would be how you would do something like a running pose. So you can finagle it, uh, but now I'm in a situation where the toy will not stand on its own. So maybe that's a case for the display stand. So we'll check that out in just a moment. There are, There is that twist point uh, in the leg. Let's see if we can do it. There you go, twisting down below the knee. And if I move this again, even smoother movement. And again, you could point outward. So the legs, you also have a toe, goes up and down, and then those flappy bits that don't really do anything for you. So uh, there's a lot going on, but without functional hips, you're kind of limited in how useful it will be to you. Now we're going to return our attention to the display stand, which I've got underneath the toy doing that somewhat dynamic pose that I had just attempted in the articulation section of the review. You could see it's uh, not really working out very well for me. The display stand isn't quite tall enough uh, and it is definitely not stable enough. Uh, so it's not tall enough so my foot can't be straight and it's not stable enough in that the toy is leaning and looks like it potentially could fall over. So. For dynamic poses, I guess it's good enough. It isn't actually falling over, and if you don't mind your toy leaning on a display stand, uh, it certainly seems unlikely you're gonna rock it so much the whole thing would collapse on you, but definitely a little short of ideal. The display stand works via just a slot that fits on the peg, which uh, is underneath the toy. So take a look at that. Here is the underneath, there's this peg right here. The slot just fits right onto that. 
like so. Kind of butts up against that plate as well. So if you had, again, the special version, you get that display stand base as well, which is here, but the base is so wide that it doesn't really gain you any height. So we can put uh, the display stand there. Here is the special version. I'm just going to uh, sync that adapter into its spot. Put the toy down. And it's floating a little bit, a little unstable. Uh, again, th these toys stand really well. So if you're doing something dynamic, sure. Use the display stand because there's no way this toy is going to stand in a dynamic pose. Uh, if you're doing something more stoic like this, the display stand would be completely useless. One last fun thing to show you. If you wanted to, you certainly could bring your arms around in Batroid mode and bring down the barrels. Uh, it's shown doing this, uh, I think actually the new UN Spacey version of the Koenig Monster is shown doing this at one point in the movie. So yes, you can absolutely do that with this toy. Overall, this is a pretty good toy, but it's a little short of great for me. It just has a few obvious shortcomings that they didn't really overcall from gaps in Batroid and gear walk modes uh, and the shuttle mode not really having landing gears to it, which I'm very happy to forgive since they uh, included a display stand and shuttle mode is otherwise pretty rock solid. Um, but overall, just uh, doesn't quite compete with some of the more polished offerings we've seen from Bandai recently. So good toy. If you're a VB6 Koenig Monster fan, this is the best out there. You definitely should get it. If you're just hunting for the best possible Macross toys, this isn't it, although it's certainly unique and has some charm. Check out my full review on anymoon.com, and as always, thanks for watching.